Okay, so I'm back. Now, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> Here's one thing I've learned, okay? Um, in life, you know, you only have so much time. So you have to be able to multitask and do, you know, other things and so forth. And one way I found to save time is like if I'm doing a construction project, um, if I have to go to the truck to get something, you know, I need a tool or something. If there's something that I know I don't need or if there's some debris or something like that, I'll take it on that trip. So that way, those steps that I spent walking to the truck to get the drill, well, I also then took those other steps that it took to do something else. So when I stopped, because I had these notes in my car yesterday, I actually was going to do a video about this yesterday. Um, these are from my buddy Greg. Greg went through and he ended up said, here's some inf uh, some ammunition to go against uh, the Dak Prescott haters and the Dallas Cowboy haters. So when I paused this, because I remember the list was in the car, um, what I did, I took a bag of trash because I'm you know, cleaning up down here. I, I think it's just going to be me, although I do have one of you fans that is coming by to get his shirts that my wife has made for him. And he may stay, so I don't want the man cave to look like a mess. So I'm cleaning up down here, too. So I took a bag of trash from behind the bar upstairs with me, right? I ended up bringing, picking up the vacuum and dumping the, the dust and stuff out of it, bringing it down here so that way I have it while I'm down here. So I killed two birds with one stone, so to speak. And you're like, I don't care about that. I just want to hear what you got to say about the Cowboys. So here's what's interesting, because <clears throat> last year... You know, the Cowboys had the number one offense in football, and everybody said, Dak Prescott sucks. He needs to get rid of him. It was garbage time. You know, you just beat up on, on, on bad teams and things like that, and that's why, you know, you got all those points and stuff. Okay, all right. There, there's no pleasing some of you. There's no pleasing some of you, and it doesn't probably matter one way or the other. Since Dak has gotten back, the Dallas Cowboys offense went from about 27th to seventh in scoring offense. That's for the totality of the season. The last four weeks, the Cowboys have been, believe it or not, the best offense in football. Let me give you something. These are from my buddy Greg. Offensive points, first in the NFL in the last four games. Total yards, third in the NFL. Rushing yards, third in the NFL. Passing yards, sixth in the NFL right now. Third down conversions, first in the NFL. Red zone touchdown percentage, third in the NFL. Explosive plays, six. Um, points per drive, number one. Those are all things. Literally, every category, they're in the top five just about, except for uh, explosive plays, they're six, and passing yards, they're six. But if you're able to really run the ball really good, Usually you don't pass as well. Now, it's funny because for those Dak Prescott haters out there, they used to say, oh, well, you've got great wide receivers and stuff with all the targets you had. Well, Amari Cooper is no longer here, who clearly was our best wide receiver. Um, CD has gotten to be really good with Dak Prescott back, a lot better than he was with Cooper Rush. Dalton Schultz has been in and out of the lineup, and Michael Gallup has not played the whole season, and he's just beginning to get in his stride. But you know... Here's the interesting thing about ESPN. It seems like when you first start working for ESPN, uh, you know, it's like a gang. you got to get beat in. And the beat in is you have to say stupid stuff about the Dallas Cowboys to be, get, to be employed with them. I think that's the way it works. Because now you look at Dan Orlowski, who's been there a couple of years. Dan Orlowski isn't saying some of the crazy things that he used to say anymore. He's actually making more and more sense. And I think right now what we have is Bart Scott is in that beat-in stage of being uh, an ESPN. So this is their talk about the Cowboys for today. The nightcap is Patriots Vikings. What can you not wait to see? Oh, you hit the nail on the head right there. The nightcap. Oh. And I want to see if Kirk Cousins is truly solar powered. Can he win a primetime game without the sun out? I think he goes back and he walks up to Bill Belichick and he says, Give me my chain back. Okay. I know Michael Parsons gave it to you. I think Minnesota bounces back. I can't wait to see it. Good luck it. with Should that. Be a good one. How about the team that beat Minnesota? The Cowboys taking on the Giants. 
I tell you what, I believe a star is born, and I think people are starting to really understand that, listen, Tony Pollard may be the second coming of Alvin Kamara. All the things that he can do, he's a dual threat. He is I said that a couple days ago. Number one in he's Dallas. like Alvin Kamara a couple years ago. To play at this level, kind of funny. I might, I might consider Cowboys a threat in the playoffs. Well, I can't wait to see it. Well, I tell you Stars what. born, Bradley Cooper Jr. I tell you, I tell you what, Dak Prescott can't wait to face the Giants because after losing his first two starts against the Giants as a rookie, he has won nine in Owns a row him. against them. With the win today, he will join Roger Staubach and Billy Kilmer as the only quarterbacks to beat the Giants in ten straight games Damn. since starts were first tracked in 1950. So we know mm. he has the Giants number, but uh, we talk about Dak Prescott a lot on this Here show. Here we go. Uh, and, we and we want to know, is he is he underrated? Like, like we talk about him a lot, but there's a lot of strong opinions. Yep. Dallas has the number one offense in the NFL since the start of last season when Dak Prescott is their starting quarterback. So that, that is a season and a half of, of Dak Prescott's stars. They have the number one offense. Hmm. Is he underrated? Or do we not it, give it, him enough credit? I think he's properly rated, in my oh. opinion. And I think Your opinion means what? Dak Prescott, there's another number out there that people don't really talk about. And that's the number about, you know, his record against quarterbacks that are what we consider um, franchise quarterbacks. I think it's something like one in eight against those type of quarterbacks. And listen, until we're accustomed to seeing the Dallas Cowboys have good regular seasons. You know, they come up with new ones all the the time on the on the road. And can he take the act into the postseason as he only has one playoff win? So until he does that, he won't be elevated in my opinion, to one of the upper echelon because he has to be the quarterback that we deem is a good quarterback in return. What do you think, D. Wood? you agree? <laughs> yeah, I do agree with some of what Bart is talking about. I think he's probably, you know, we got him at, at the right spot. I don't think he's a guy that can put a whole franchise on his back. I think he's a guy that's, play, that's playing very well within the system that the Dallas, Dallas Cowboys have, a, you know, have going for him. But ultimately, listen, it comes down to the postseason. That's what we talk about when we talk about That's all the true. great quarterbacks. What you do in the postseason. And for Dak Prescott, that's what we're waiting to see. We're waiting to see, can he elevate his status in the postseason? Go win games in the postseason, ultimately get the Dallas Cowboys to the Super Bowl. Because until that happens, I think we'll, we'll keep Dak Prescott in that, that kind of second-tier level uh, of quarterbacks. I mean, I don't know, like he won a playoff game against Russell Wilson back when Russell Wilson was good, right? He went toe to toe with Aaron Rodgers his rookie year. Rodgers well, with a ludicrous sideline throw. I mean, he got outplayed by Aaron Rodgers. Is there any shame in that, Nico? What do you think about that? Well, I, you know, I think he's been injured a couple times that probably affected his progression here. You know, with the ankle, then he came back, and then it had the hand injury this season, which probably slowed him down. That's something that you have to take into consideration. Last week, he played lights out. I think he's kind of where he's at because of those injuries and because of the inconsistency. If he can continue to grow and be consistent and then win a couple playoff games, I think we would probably put him higher up on the list. But the time will tell if Bart will put him in the top ten. I know his brother, uh, Dak's brother, is going to be upset with Bart because he's out of the top ten. Look, yeah, again, so, this is the list right here on this piece yeah. of paper. All the offenses that have scored more no. points than the Cowboys have with Dak as their starter. This is it. That's the whole list. Care, That's no, nobody. <laughs> the last year and a half. Number one offense, number one defense. If you get bounced in the playoffs, that's a you problem because you had everything you needed to, to be a champion in this league. And if you can't do that, that's on him. Okay. Unless you are Jimmy Garoppolo, apparently. Unless oh. you're Jimmy Garoppolo, in which case, that is okay. Thank you. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not oh, letting Oh, Lord, go. everybody's picking the, the Cowboys. Say, first, we're going to start with the Cowboys, Giants. <laughs> Everybody pick the Cowboys. D. Wood, real quick, why do you like the Cowboys in this game? Mm. Yeah, listen, I, I just think the Cowboys, the, first of all, the Giants got a lot of injuries that they deal with. But I think if we get this, this version of the Dallas Cowboys that played against the Minnesota Vikings, they're the best team in the NFC, and I think the Dallas Cowboys will uh, will continue the, their their game plan that they had against the Minnesota Vikings. Mm-hmm. They should win this game. We will see. Obviously, a big opportunity to show the world that they are for real. Bills Lions. Let's put that one up and see if we got any disagreement on that. We do not. Every- All right, I'm gonna leave it right there for now. Okay, so I'm curious though of something. Right now. How many quarterbacks out there do you look at that are elevating and putting the team on their back 
without having any support to it. You know, because they, they talk about Green Bay. Now, Green Bay, they did beat us. I got to give them credit for that. But right now, apparently, he can't put the team on his back and, and will them to win. Tom Brady, right now with Tampa Bay, they did beat us. I will give you that. Um, they're leading their division, but they're leading their division more out of default than anything else. That team, he's not, well, I guess he actually has put them on his back because it seems like everybody else is failing. But how many of these quarterbacks out here that, you know, we're, we're talking about here are doing what they're saying that, you know, Dak's not doing? I remember everybody talking and, and drinking the Kool-Aid about Justin Herbert and saying how great he is and everything else. His coach might be get fired this year. His coach might be. I'm, I'm just trying to, you know, oh, Russell Wilson, he's Russell Wilson is ass. Matthew Stafford, he's a Hall of Famer. Fastest guy to, you know, 50,000 yards. He's a bum. He had a great team. He, he didn't elevate that team. He just was not Jared Goff. So this is the typical bullshit that you get about the Dallas Cowboys and, and of course, Dak Prescott. Anyway, I'm going to vacuum the floor, get everything situated here, all nice and clean, ready to go. I'm Mark Holmes, and I appreciate you. Peace.